Welcome to the hard cell, where the stick in the swill bucket rattles back, and where I still can't make head or tail of source filmmaker, so I'm starting yet another year looking like this. Yes, it's another journey around the sun, and capitalism still hasn't collapsed yet. So advertising is still a thing. And therefore, so is this show. To ease us into 22, let's go back to the first day of another year, specifically 1995, which is now 27 years ago. The age of Britpop is close to being where their own inspirations, the Beatles and the Kinks and all that business, were at that time, if you follow. Anyway, New Year's Day 1995. History has long since ended, at least according to Francis Fukuyama, because there's no Cold War anymore, no Soviet Union to fight it against. The capitalist West in general, and America in particular, have won, and the argument is settled absolutely forever, until it isn't anymore, but we don't know that's going to happen yet. Nothing remains for the victors but to sit back and eat pies and occasionally help out with the devastating wars and genocides going on in places like Eastern Europe and Africa, where they didn't get the memo about history having been over for six years. Never mind the long-distance historical view, though, we're here to watch some adverts. And as it's technically still a holiday day, here's a classic kids' film. George Powell's Tom Thumb, which is a pretty good film, and deserves to be seen if only so you can challenge yourself to sit through the yawning song without yawning. I'm the yawning man, the yawning man. I come when shadows creep. With my yawning song, I stroll along and help put people to sleep. <laughs> It is just about possible, but only with a mighty effort. Like grinding your teeth down to powder and clamping down every facial muscle. It's much better, not to say healthier, just to give in. Tom Thumb was on Channel 4 on New Year's Day 1995, and here's the first commercial break. Announcing the arrival of the new Hyundai Accent. Car adverts tend to diminish a little over the course of December because gift items naturally squeeze them out. Not that a car can't be given as a gift, but generally speaking, only by people so extraordinarily rich there's no point advertising to them at all. On a related note, have you ever noticed the ratio of Alfa Romeo ads to, say, Vauxhall ones? When was the last time you saw a Lamborghini commercial in the wild compared to one for Kia? In what context have you ever seen an advert for a Porsche? At the cinema, maybe? Or during the Super Bowl? Probably not so often during Emmerdale. We're far more likely to find Land Rovers being advertised in that slot. And during December, not even those. Because Old Spice is much better positioned at that time of year. But now it's January. And it's safe to dangle vehicles as carrots once more. So here's one for Hyundai or Hyundai, to use the traditional UK pronunciation, deployed here by Simon Cadell. And a car so special, they're prepared to both airlift it onto a cliff for no reason at all, and to damage it in the process. Aerodynamic design, multi-point fuel injection, side impact bars, three-year unlimited mileage warranty, electric windows, Front and rear crumple zones. And really, very strong crumple zones. See? Advertisers need very understanding insurance companies. Remember when Mobile hurled three cars off a tall building? In at least one case, just for the hell of it. At least all this one got was a busted fog light. The new Hyundai Accent from £6,599, when all you want is everything. One hundred and two. Ninety-three. It's not called Euro Disney anymore. Stop calling it Euro Disney. 
This part was a good idea, I tell you. It was a good idea. Michael Eisler commands you to come here. 79. You just know these two are cast for bushiness of tash and adorability of diastema. That's the medical term for the gap between the teeth. I bet Disney had doctors with tape measures examining those things. I hope they were dressed as Mickey Mouse while they did it. I don't know how old my grandpa is, but he's younger than he used to be. Someone you know can't wait to go. Anyway, it's a suitably cute premise for an advert which carefully gives impressions rather than details of a park still in the process of relaunching. The magic of Disney makes Field Marshal Douglas Haig younger, I guess. Hopefully they left before he reverted into a fetus. Disneyland, Paris. And now, a downright frightening head and shoulders advert, in which a bloke is literally torn apart by two terrifying women in lab coats and examined like a specimen. Oh dear. Sorry? Microbes again. Microbes? Mm, they're what cause the dandruff. Only one thing for it. Half head test. Hold on. I'll wash half his head in one of these. Doesn't matter which. And I'll wash his other half in head and shoulders to show how its unique microd formula neutralizes more of the microbes. See on this side. Mm, well. But with head and shoulders. That's great. Head and shoulders. Doesn't half shift dandruff. Oh, nice one. One. Oi, I'm only half done. Pull yourself together. You put them together, you took them apart. This is a classic advertising industry overreaction to feminism. You say we, and culture in general, has considered 50% of the population inherently inferior for centuries, if not millennia? And now they're sick of it? Well, how about we turn it on its head by having members of that 50% treat the previously dominant one with extreme contempt and occasional violence? That should make everything all better. Micro D isn't a thing, by the way. See also, Retz it. Head and shoulders. Does not shift dandruff. Oh, Oi, I'm only half done. Pull yourself together. Looking for a great deal on airfares? Ah, holidays. Two things you're guaranteed to be pitched in every commercial break in the immediate aftermath of Christmas, and the actual mouth as well, come to think of it, are holidays and sales. Surprisingly, spoiler warning, there are no sales in this break. But there are plenty of holidays and holiday-related bits and bobs. Christmas is over. All you've got to look forward to now is two dark, cold months of dieting, slate-grey skies, and scraping ice off your windscreen and or fingernails. Fuck that. Go on holiday instead. Back in the days before the travel sector got cultonized, by which I mean that one company eventually bought all the rest, this was their other boom time. This advert right here, though, isn't for a travel agent. It's for a magazine that seems to function in the same way that Go Compare or that Meerkat thing or whatever else do now. But don't take my word for it. Here's the blandest man you ever saw. Just call this number now to get your complimentary copy of Flight Buyer Magazine. 0990 See? Flight Buyer Magazine. A magazine so good it doesn't even need consistent fonts. Or interesting advertising. Oh nine nine oh double one double five double five. The pattern is set now, though, and we're immediately assaulted with more holidays. Proper advert this time. Look. Slow motion, high saturation shots of unimaginable luxury. Starring a genetic hybrid of Andy McDowell and Demi Moore, and soundtrack by a cough syrup version of Zippity Doodah that I actually find vaguely sinister and unsettling. With Mediterranean cruises from four hundred and forty nine pounds, the summer ninety five. That's how far air tours go to make you happy. Designed to engender almost unbearable envy and longing in the poor post-Christmas viewer, 
shivering in their recently defestified domicile in rain-lashed Dunstable or wherever. You might could be doing this instead, for just a little bit of a lot of cost money. Air Tours Ocean Cruises Air Tours Ocean Cruises Air Tours Ocean Cruises Just deal with it. Gosh, is that a woman partaking in sexual relations? No, of course it isn't. She's just excited because she can wear a dress. As her friend, occupying the next cubicle down for what can only be assumed to be voyeuristic reasons, will politely explain. It's all right. It's a very special moment for my friend Sam. She's lost three stone with Weight Watchers and she's just got into a size 12. You see, comedy hue. Slimming is another staple of the post-festive season, of course, to the extent I already made an episode about it. You just spent a week gorging on starch, sugar, salt and trans fats, and now you're absolutely disgusting and you need to punish yourself. With six weeks of flavourless mush until all that flab is gone, if you harbour any ambitions whatsoever of being socially acceptable again. If you're all interested in Weight Watchers because you've long since given up on that dream, then please enjoy this montage of nice asses instead. You could lose at least six pounds in your first two weeks with the new Weight Watchers programme. In fact, if you don't, we'll give you a week free. That's guaranteed. Plus, join now and register free. Save nine pounds. Now, isn't that worth getting excited about? Yes! I wonder what she looked like with those extra three stone on. I assume from the tone of the advert, like the EU butter mounted on legs. And let's not forget that the camera does add about 12 tons. Yes! Yes, more holidays, and this time it's Thomas Cook using the voice of Hugh Laurie to command some grey bloke to swap his NHS spectacles for shades and indulge in some rhyming slang. Our special offer means you can take a Thomas Cook on the bright side. Which never managed to supplant butchers, no matter how hard they tried, let alone dislodging the long-standing on-and-off slogan, Don't Just Book It, Thomas Cook It, which people still remember to this day, even though Thomas Cook itself has died several times. By now. The brand is currently owned by some Chinese people who purchased it when the last version died in 2019. As you can imagine, they haven't really had a chance to do much with it since then, what with one plague and another. SO unleaded fuels now have more cleaning power, reducing some harmful emissions by up to 20%. Finally, here's SO having their cake and eating it by representing themselves as a Siberian tiger romping through the steppes, simultaneously invoking environmentalism and power, and placing Exxon Valdez firmly in the past, thank you very much. This has been Esso's strategy ever since that little mishap stroke disaster. They were fortunate to already have the tiger as an all-purpose mascot, and after painting Prince William Sound black, they quickly doubled down on it, buying up yards of wildlife on one footage and hiring the most charismatic megafauna they could find. In particular, the late Tango the Tiger, seen here ignoring the government's frozen pots can be dangerous in extremely majestic fashion. While still allowing your car optimum performance. Tango was bred in captivity here in the UK, and when Esso moved on to a different advertising campaign, he was sold to a German circus, where he was very miserable, and scheduled to be put down along with his cat wife, until someone spent six months and twenty-five grand on rescuing him and bringing him back to Britain, where he spent his next and last two years in Tiger retirement, before dying on September 11, 2016, at the impressively old age of twenty-two. A good cat. Esso Unleaded, a new generation of performance fuels. And that's the end of that. 
Despite the Drake bumper Channel 4 are using here, George Powell himself insisted on spelling the title of Tom Thumb in lower case. Pointless affectation or pointy affectation? You decide. Or don't. I'll leave you with this message, directed at 2022 itself. Please, please be boring. I'm the yawning man, the yawning man. I come when shadows creep. With my yawning song, I stroll along. And help put people to sleep. <laughs> you just sat through a Bob the Fish production. Nice. If you haven't already, you absolutely must check out bobthefish.org.uk. Literally hundreds more videos, not unlike that one, adding up to days worth of entertainment and all absolutely free. But if you're not a cold-hearted skinflint, you can always support us on Patreon. For as little as anything at all, you can make programmes like the one you just watched possible in the first place, and become eligible for bonus material, such as glimpses of the book I'm writing about the BBC, monthly riffings on random commercial breaks, the complete archives of the angry political satire magazine Two Sons, and even the odd very occasional bonus video essay unavailable anywhere else. If nothing else, you should prevent me from starving and or freezing to death in the foreseeable future, so that'd be nice. No pressure or anything. BobTheFish.org.uk You make it what it is. Mm -hmm.